Today I have two items to unbox for you from Hermes, and these are both from the men's collection. What could I possibly have picked up from the men's collection? Stay tuned to find out. <music> YouTube, Autumn Beckman here. Welcome to my channel or welcome back to my channel. My channel is all about luxury living on a budget from high-end luxury handbags and small goods to the everyday luxuries of life. If that sounds interesting to you, please make sure you subscribe, click the bell notification icon to be notified when I post new videos and be sure to like the videos that you enjoy. And one of the perks of subscribing to my channel is you get to see my community posts on your YouTube homepage where I post deals, discount codes, sales, and rare finds related to these beautiful things we love. Let's see what I got from the men's collection at our men's both of these items I did not purchase directly from Hermes. The bigger box on the bottom is from Fashion File, and then this box is from Yugi's Closet, and I will have both of those places linked below. I'm going to start with the Fashion File item, only because I have already peeked at this, because I got it maybe a week ago, and I was waiting on the other item to arrive so I could unbox them both together. Here is the inside of the Fashion File box. We're all familiar with these, are we not? Well wrapped, well padded. Pull out the box. There's a receipt somewhere in there all the usual stuff, and what's happening here. There's an actual box in here, not from the manufacturer, but from Fashion File. I have never seen this before, except for with a jewelry purchase. So let's open this up and see what's inside. Well, we have a Fashion File dust bag with the item in it, and then this is some black foam, which has some little slits in it, which appears to be a jewelry box, like for a big necklace or something. It's a nice sturdy box. Maybe I can use that for something. Inside the Fashion File dust bag is, well, I thought it was going to come out dramatically, but well, there we are. The little flare. It didn't quite work how I'd imagined it. That's all right. Life is like that sometimes. All right, let me show you my favorite side of this. This is a double-faced scarf, so it's different on each side. It's the same design on each side, but it has a different colorway on each side. Here it is. This is a 90 centimeter scarf from the men's collection, and this is called C'est La Fête. Let's look up how to pronounce that and see if I did it correctly. Okay, it's C'est La Fête. Hermes does not have a description of this that I could see on the scarf website, and I will bring it up closer in just a minute, but you can see overall you have something happening in the middle over on top of a big H in a circle, and then there are some design elements around that. On the other side, you have the same design, but all orange with just some black outline. So that's only, well, there are still a couple of colors on there because it looks like they have a little shading in the design, but I will bring it up closer and show you some of the details and why I picked this. Part of the reason I picked it was because it's double-sided. I didn't have anything like that in my scarf collection yet. I thought that was quite beautiful, but there's something about the design that I don't know if you can see from this far away yet that really grabbed my attention. First of all, it does have the tags still on it. So this is a brand new item with tags. It has the fashion file tag and the paper tag with the cloth tag. And then here's a little closer look at what the orange side looks like. I think you can tell there's a little bit of shading in there. I'm also noticing some words now on this horseshoe creativity is there a different word on each one one corner didn't have one the opposite corner says whatever that says I don't know what that is I'll to, oops I'll have to look it up now on the blue gray side it says c'est la fête and then here is what really drew me to the scarf this center image of the horse and rider but they are skeletons and I thought that was just fabulous. And then you may have already noticed on that orange corner, and it has the same thing on these corners. Oh no, it is a, no, it's the same. Okay. Actually, let me switch to this corner because it looks like every other corner is different. Like two corners are the same, the opposite corners are the same, and then the other opposite corners are different from these. So here we have horseshoe and spur, and then there are all these metal details or they're made to look like metal. And these have horse skeletons on either side, which I thought is so beautiful. So this brings in so many elements from Hermes with the horse husbandry. Is that a flower? And is husbandry the right word? Horsing. It brings in a lot of elements from horsing. That's gotta be the right word, right? And it has all these bridles and things that you see in Hermes designs. And then here's the other side, which also has the horseshoe and the spur, but then it has one big horse instead of the two smaller ones. And just all these horsey elements. Elements. And then back to your skeleton horse and rider. And I just thought the detail in this and the overall design was just so cool. I think Gwenny would really like this scarf. She likes skeleton-y stuff too. It's just really, really beautiful. And down here under the horse and rider, it says Hermes Paris. And on the blue side, it does have those same words in the horseshoe. Let me go look up what that is. It's Lopout. 
I have no idea what that is. That's that's the translation. Let's look it up. It's not coming up. It's a mystery. Let me show you this pouch. Pouch. Let me show you this scarf on. I'm gonna fold it into a triangle here and just pull it around. And mainly I just wanna show you how the orange looks with it. So I give this a little tie here because the blue gray side is my favorite, but I do also like that you get a little bit of the orange showing. And you could hide it some if you want, but just get little peaks of it like here and here and I think that's really pretty. And then I'll show you how it looks on the orange side just to give you an idea of that as well. There it is with a little peak of blue. I like the other side better, but depending on the outfit, it could work well either way. Now let's see what item I got from Hermes from Yugi's Closet. I'm excited to see this one. It is a bit different from other Hermes pieces in my collection. Here's the inside of the box. It has my receipt in here and the item in here. They've packaged that very nicely in a plastic bag to protect it and then in a dust bag, drawstring, and inside, let's see if I can make this one more dramatic. That worked better. So it's another scarf, but this one is different, not just in the design, but in the materials. Let me look up the tag here. This is not 100% silk like the other scarf. This is 70% wool and 30% silk, and this is it. I forget what size it is. I think it's 100 because it's bigger than the other one. Yeah, I'm pretty sure it's 100 centimeters. This is the design. It is called Sweet Dreams, and I'll bring it closer. So the scarf is divided into rectangles, and in each of the rectangles is a different little nightmarish monster. So of course the title Sweet Dreams is a bit tongue-in-cheek, yes? because these are certainly not creatures of sweet dreams. The artist is Jean Batlik, something like that. I may be mispronouncing it, but it's close. I looked up videos on how he pronounces his name and um, it's still so different from how I pronounce things that it was difficult for me to pick up on exactly what he was saying and how to pronounce it properly. But I'm really loving his artwork. I have other scarves from him and I'm moving back. I have found that his artwork, his style of work changes. Like if I see a scarf, I don't automatically know that that's him. And I really like that about him. I get a little bored sometimes as an artist myself, if I'm doing the same thing and the same style over and over again, I want to change it up. And I appreciate that he does that. I know the scarf gets a lot of comparisons to where the wild things are. I'm going to fold it in half and see how it does. Oh, also, can you tell that this is kind of see-through compared to the 100% silk scarves, which are quite opaque? Let's see how this looks on. Which monster do I want to feature? I think I'll do this one. And this is more um, pliable. It's kind of softer and more flowy than the 100% silks. Like this will just stay like this, whereas the silk ones, these end pieces, want to fly back because those those scarves from Hermes tend to be a little stiffer. Oh, this is nice. I like that. I'm closer so you can see that a little better. So when you're wearing this folded like this, where it's bunched up, you don't really see the monster so much. What you see are the patterns and you have a lot of different patterning in this scarf, which is nice. That's something I'm going to go back. That's something that I've been frustrated with before is let's say, well, like the skeleton one I just showed you. I love that design like on a wall, right, as a piece of art. And when you start folding it up, you can't see the design anymore. Like if I wear it like this, you can't see the skeleton, the horse and rider. You just still see those very cool corners, but you lose, in my opinion, the best part of it. Something I've learned as I've been working with scarves more and more, buying scarves and wearing them in different ways, is when you're wearing them, it is more about the colors and the patterns and where those are. And you just have to kind of live with the fact that you're gonna lose the imagery in a lot of cases. This is really fun, I like that a lot. I like the dark colors, these blues, different shades of blues, and it has like grays and a little black and white in it. It could be really versatile and worn with a lot of things. And even though it's 70% wool, it doesn't feel hot. It's a very lightweight scarf. Well, this is nice. I wasn't sure about this when I picked it up from Yugi's Closet. I thought it would be more of the texture of the cashmere and silk scarves, which are a little heavier than this and would be warmer. But this will be a nice summery scarf. I'm going to tell you a little bit about these scarves. The artist on the skeleton scarf I'm gonna mispronounce this name, Daisuke Nomura. It was released in 2021 in the men's collection. It's double-faced. I paid $495, which was under retail. I think it was 600 something retail. Sweet Dreams, this colorway is number 13, according to information I found. I already told you the artist. It was released in 2019 in the spring summer collection in the men's department and retail was $800. I only paid 445 at Yugi's Closet. I tell you what, 
what? They don't have a lot of Hermes scarves over at Yugi's Closet. However, their prices are really good on them. So if you are an Hermes scarf lover, I would recommend keeping an eye on Yugi's. I'm gonna start doing that more because this was a fantastic price. Oh, just saw. I like to point out some of the details on these scarves and right here is where it says Hermes Paris. And can you can you tell that it's see-through? I don't think that's really working too well with my lights, but it's very flowy and lightweight. Look at this guy with the horns, that's awesome. And that brings us to the end of the video. Let me know what you thought about these two pieces from the men's collection that are pretty out there, I would think, for a lot of people in terms of the artwork. Do you love them? Do you hate them? I bet they're not gonna be for a lot of you. And that's okay. You don't have to buy them. I happen to really, really love these. I'm very drawn to this artwork. I love illustrations and I love disturbing illustrations. Thank you so much for watching. I do appreciate it. Hope to see you back here next time and I hope you have a fantastic day. Bye.